I'm Gabe Joel. I have a Batman robe. This is Comic Smack, the show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're going to be taking a closer look at Titans Hunt, issue number eight, the grand finale of this Dan Abnett series. Enjoy it while you can before it just becomes the Titans in DC Reaver. So with that out of the way, let's hop into the issue. So as the comic opens, we can see the former Teen Titans are all finally united, all together to battle the threat of Mr. Twister and the otherworldly evil forces that he seems to be working for. Twister is, of course, playing by Freddy Krueger logic, that is, he can't actually hurt anyone unless they remember him, unless they feed into him and give him physical form. That's why Twister moved Heaven and Earth so much to try and get Mal Duncan under his control, so Mal could use the power of his voice, the power of his song, to subtly and subliminally break break Lilith's spell that kept all the other Titans from remembering what happened to them all those years ago in their original fight with Twister. Mr. Twister is still far too ghostly for any of our heroes to hurt, that's why he was towing Mammoth around with him to do all the physical tasks that he couldn't do. Luckily, Karen, Mal's very pregnant wife, makes the scene, having her own powers activated last issue, and oh my, can she hurt Twister, and she wants to hurt him real bad too for all the crap he's put her and her family through. With the ten heroes all in their proper place, even if these aren't all the same ten heroes that Mr. Twister had originally planned for, he is ready to move ahead with the next step of his plot, and that is tearing open a doorway between our world and some sort of crazy Lovecraftian demon world. They never exactly do say who Mr. Twister is working for in this issue. I mean, this is the Teen Titans we're dealing with, so I don't know, maybe Trigun, maybe not. With history about to repeat itself, Nightwing Dick Grayson decides to take charge of the situation, leader that he is, saying that before the team defeated Mr. Twister by forgetting him. This time, they're going to have to do the opposite. They first start to do this by fully admitting that they are no longer the scared, inexperienced kids that Twister terrorized all those years ago. They've grown up, they've matured, they're more than sidekicks now, more than teen titans, they're full titans. This is a great moment too because it allows the writer to give names to all the heroes whose names haven't yet been said in the new 52, Omen and Caveboy being two of the biggest ones. Yep, it seems like everyone is able to shake off the evil demonic influence of Twister and his dark master, that is except for Hawk. You see, it was his brother, the original Dove, who died at Twister's hands all those years ago. He's the one they kept talking about, the one they couldn't remember, or at least one of them, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Hawk doesn't feel fear or self-doubt about what happened to him, no, he feels blind rage, and because of that, he attacks Twister, drawing blood, officially making this maybe the coolest thing Hawk has ever done, ever. With that, the heroes manage to get the upper hand on the situation, and Nark, aka Caveboy, grabs Mr. Twister. Twister and decides to make him up as an offering to the evil demon he was trying to bring through the portal. Oh, but he didn't see that coming. And thus, the threat is ended and the day is saved. As the comic winds down, the team goes back to that diner from earlier on in the series and grabs some food. They also decide that perhaps they'd better stick together for the time being. One, to get back all the memories that they lost of the lives they once had together. And to safeguard the Earth from evil forces like Mr. Twister. However, there is one question that is still burning within the mind of the team, and in indeed the reader as well. You see, like Twister said, there was ten Teen Titans originally. Karen filled the role in this ritual and they found out that Dove was the one who died, but the question still remains, who was the other one? Who was the missing Teen Titan? They don't have to wonder long, however, because outside a flash of lightning is seen in the sky. Why? Because the original Wally West, Kid Flash, has returned. Titans Hunt number eight, while perhaps being a little weaker a finale than I was hoping for, for this admittedly really awesome miniseries. I suppose at the end of the day, it didn't really have to be a strong ending, because it's not the end, it's going to continue. In fact, this ended up being the first real shot fired in the whole DC Rebirth thing, although of course you would have to have actually read the DC Universe number one story to understand the significance of the lightning bolt at the end, but hey there, I said it. It's unfortunate to me that despite all the build-up that they did for him, Mr. Twister was not only defeated super easily, but just so happened to be working for another greater evil undercutting him. Overall, though, I would feel comfortable giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer? Or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.